The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one about whom Moses wrote in the law and also the prophets, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. But Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come from Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said to him, Here is a true child of Israel. There is no duplicity in him. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. And he said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Today we celebrate uh, St. Bartholomew, and Bartholomew is one of the great apostles of the church um, who eventually um, was sent, um, I think he was in, uh, uh, he went off, to, I can't remember the country, but he's born, it says, in Cana of Galilee, um, and he was led to Jesus by Philip. And it's interesting because it's like here we see how Philip is leading Nathanael to Christ. And this is all um, into God's kingdom, into his presence, into a relationship with Jesus, right? So we don't want to just be like religious. We want to have that relationship, right? Because it's the religious that actually rejected Christ. Those who had a relationship, they're, they're, if, our, if our religion's not rooted in relationship, then it's something's wrong, right? So we got to pray always about that. You know, we can come to Mass all the time, we can pray the Rosary and not even know the Lord. You know, so we have to really ask Him, Holy Spirit, I want to know Jesus. I want to know the Father. I want to know you. And so asking for that every day is important. <clears throat> so Bartholomew eventually... You know, he was a very zealous preacher, and uh, the pagans, uh, pagan priests actually um, hated him um, in the countries that he uh, preached the gospel. I was reading this morning, and it says that, you know, he was um, obviously persecuted gravely. Um, he was uh, beaten. He was flayed. His skin was cut off, and he was beheaded um, for the gospel. So I want you to think about that. What happened to him that would allow him to be so determined to not give up? Because, you know, think about it in our country today. You know, we, we upset a family member. We just be quiet then about the gospel. We, we, we silence Jesus because a family member is not happy. You know, I always say, if, if you don't want to spend, if you, if, if you are tired of hanging out with people, just start talking about Jesus and everyone will leave, <laughs> you know? Because Christ isn't a friend of just like, you know, hey, let's just all be nice. Let's just hang out. He's always going to challenge you and I. He's always going to challenge us. Our world today has a real problem with, with, with challenge. You know, we want to make the rules. We want to live in comfort. We want to live in our own convenient lifestyle. You know, if you will, we don't want anyone to challenge us or upset the, you know, the boat. We want to don't rock the boat. Um, this is not Jesus. This is not Jesus' mindset. Christ went in and he often stirred things up in a very profound and, and very uh, challenging way. I mean, he challenges us all. So I, what I want you to think about is this first reading as well. Revelations chapter 21. It says, listen, the angel spoke to me saying, come here. I, wanna, I will show you the bride, the wife of the lamb. That's the church, right? So John, the apostles, having this vision. It says he was shown, took, he was taken in the spirit to this high mountain, and, and God showed him the, the, the bride, the wife of the lamb. It says, it gleamed with splendor, radiance like that of precious stone, jasper like clear as crystal, massive high walls, you know, the 12 gates representing the 12 tribes of Israel, the, the 12 courses of stone symbolizing the, the foundation being the 12 apostles. And so this bride, you know, God's bride, Jesus is not a fan again of just kind of, you know, like it says in uh, 
I think it's Revelation it says, you know, he will vomit the lukewarm out of his mouth. You know, you're neither hot nor cold. God would rather us hate him than not care. Because if you hate God, it means you're, you're still wrestling with what he's saying. But if you're just lukewarm and you don't, you're, not, you're not in love with him, but you don't hate him, you're just kind of, basically you're out of touch. You're, you're just, there, there's no sense of wrestling any longer. You're just kind of, all right, you know, that's cool, that's good, you know, and you just move on. But you never let him challenge you because there's parts of all of us that are very resistant to him. And so I'd like you to think about that. Is Bartholomew, he saw... God coming down to earth. He saw heaven and earth coming together. He saw and understood the mass. He understood what was going on here at the Eucharist. You know, I was at the nursing home today, you know, sharing with the, the, the uh, people there, the, those that live there, and they were saying, or I was saying to them, you have a mission. You know, sometimes I think they can think like, oh, I'm just waiting here to die. That's Satan. You're not waiting to die. God would have taken you if he was done with you. You still have a mission. And so their mission is, I said to them, three things. One, offer your life daily, your sufferings. Two, pray your rosary every day. You have time to do that. Pray it. We all have time to do that. And three, do a spiritual communion every day. You know, they might not be able to go to Mass every day, but they can do spiritual communion and teach people this. I'd like you all to teach people this. What I used to do when I worked and I couldn't uh, go to Mass every day, what I would do is come home from work, kneel down on my back porch, and I would look up in the sky, and I would say, God, I can't receive you now physically, but I want to. But I want to receive you spiritually. And what I would do is I'd say, Guardian Angel, because my parish was down the street, so I'd say, Guardian Angel, go down to my parish, St. Saint, Saint Hugh it was, H-U-G-H. I said, go down to St. Hugh, go to the tabernacle and bring me back Holy Communion. And I'd stick out my tongue, just pause a minute, let my guardian angel give me Holy Communion. And then I would pause and thank God for Holy Communion. And then I would go throughout my day. But that's a spiritual communion. You could teach people how to do that. Be apostles of the Eucharist. Go out and teach people. Hey, if you can't go to Mass, let me teach you how to do a spiritual communion. Let's do it together. I'm going to show you right now. Don't just tell them. Do it with them right there. And so you teach them a spiritual communion. And we can all do this every day. But this is just a small example of how, like Bartholomew, he went and spread the, good, the gospel. He brought people. You know, I saw some, you know, I always see people walking by. They go to the store, and I think they go over to their apartments over here. I'm like, do they know? that heaven's coming to earth, right? They just walked by it. You know, do they know that? Obviously, probably not, right? So we gotta be apostles of, uh, of the Lord and go out in the spirit. John was taken in the spirit. And it says here, the bride, the wife of the lamb. So again, let's tell people. Go show people, tell people, invite people. Come, would you like to see heaven? Would you like to encounter Jesus? Come to the mass with me. Come and experience the bride of the lamb. Come and eat and drink at the table of the Lord. As it says here, amen, amen, I say to you, you will see heaven open and heaven and the angels of God ascending and descending to the son of man. And this is where we're at right now. Come and see. Remember, that's what Philip said to Nathaniel. He said, can anything good come from Nazareth? Like, can anything good come from St. Gerald's? That's kind of, he's, Nathaniel's kind of got a smart mouth, it sounds like, right? And, and Philip's like, well, come and see. You know, come on and see. Come here, I want to show you something. You know, you could bring people in here and you say, hey, would you like to see Jesus? Don't, don't let your mind block you from evangelizing. Our mind's like, oh, we're going to come in there and they'll be bored. They won't know what to look. God is perfectly capable of taking care of himself, believe me. He's done it for 2,000 so years. He's in the tabernacle right there. And you bring people in here. He knows where they're at. You just say, let's sit down. We're going to sit here five minutes and just be quiet. Watch him work. He knows how to touch that soul. We don't got to worry about how he's going to do it. He's God. Let him do it. Just bring him in. He just says, bring people, bring them, bring them. He says, your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. And so I want you all to think about this as, as be like Phillips. Go out and say, come and see. And teach people how to do maybe that spiritual communion. Teach children. You know, children love the angels. Teach them that. And, and we can all experience again together, you know, this amazing